Okay, so today in this pre-lecture we're going to be talking about concatenated codes, which gives us a way to combine two codes with different properties and get a code with properties that we want. Um, so this is, you know, can be pretty broad and use a lot of different types of codes. One of the most common ways to do this is using the Reed solomon code um, that we've covered as sort of the first code that we're using. So one example of when we might use this construction is if we want to use a Reed solomon code to have those properties, but we want our output to be in binary rather than a finite field FQ. So remember that the Reed solomon code is a linear code that's outputting uh, vectors with entries in FQ, but maybe if we're transmitting something, we want that to be transmitted in binary since most computers don't work over finite fields FQ. So um, the solution to this is that we're first going to encode using a Reed Solomon code and then take the result and somehow encode that in binary. So we can think of this as we're taking some original input uh, over here. So our original input. Um, applying the outer code, uh, which is the Reed Solomon code, um, and then we get um, our result from that. We get code words in some alphabet uh, sigma out, um, we call that. And then uh, we apply another code, which takes the alphabet of the outer code. So, for example, for a Reed Solomon code, the alphabet is FQ, since the vector entries are coming from FQ. So, we're going to be encoding elements of FQ. Uh, using the inner code to give our final result um, that gives the overall uh, concatenated code. So this is a lot easier to see by looking at a specific example, so we're going to do that. So consider the generating matrix um, for a Reed solomon code over F8. So remember this is obtained by looking at um, that Vandermond matrix. Um, we don't look at uh, that special reduced to echelon form here, we're just going to stick to this basic form here because we don't need to be working with a check matrix. Um, so this is going to be the outer code for our concatenated code. So what we do when we're encoding using this Reed solomon code is we're starting with a vector in F8.3, um, applying that outer code, the Reed solomon code, and we obtain a vector in F8.8. So we've got a vector with eight entries, each of which is in F8. So for example, if we're encoding 0, 1, 0, then we get uh, that second row there, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that would be applying the outer code. Um, and the alphabet of this outer code is F8, since inputs are encoded as sequences or vectors of elements in F8. So our inner code is going to take individual elements of F8 as inputs and produce binary strings out of those, so that our final output is going to be in binary. So the sort of simple way to do this is uh, taking an element of F8, writing that as an integer like we have been, um, and outputting the binary representation of that integer. Uh, so um, we're going to do this using three digits, since every single one of these integers can be written in binary using three or fewer digits. And um, for coding purposes, uh, it's going to be better to have them all the same length. So um, we know when one integer begins and the next one ends. So for example, 0, 0, 0, or 0 would be encoded as 0, 0, 0, 1 would be encoded as 0, 0, 1, 2 would be encoded as 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, just looking at the binary representations for these numbers. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. So then uh, for the concatenated code, we're starting with 0, 1, 0. We applied a Reed solomon code to get this longer vector here, and then every entry of this vector is going to be encoded um, in binary. So I'm going to go over to the next line here, so I've got a little bit more space. Uh, but then just encoding each of these, 0 is encoded as 0, 0, 0, and 1 is 0, uh, 0, 1, and 2 is 0, 1, 0, 3 is 0, 1, 1, 4 is 1, 0, 0, 5 is 1, 0, 1, 6, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So just taking each of those entries and encoding them using our second inner code. Um, so when we concatenate these codes, they sort of combine the properties 
um, of the codes that we're concatenating here. So if C out is our, our, our outer code, and that has minimum distance D out and rate R out, uh, and C in has minimum distance D in and rate R in, then when we're looking at the concatenated code, we use this notation C out circ C in to be the concatenation of these two codes. So something to notice here is that the order that this is written in is maybe a little bit strange uh, when you compare this to function notation, that we're listing the outer code first, and that's the code that we apply first, and then the inner code um, is second, which is the uh, way we go, the code we apply second. Um, so uh, sort of the reasons for this are a little bit more technical, but you know it may be not your first guess for how this um, would work. So uh, the, we've got the concatenation of those two codes. Then it turns out we can find the rate of the concatenated code really easily by just taking the product of the rates of the outer code and inner code. Um, and then the minimum distance is at least the product of their, the, the individual codes um, minimum distance. So it's at least that big, it could be bigger. So we can easily say something about the minimum distance, and we know what the rate of the code is. Uh, furthermore, if we're looking at two linear codes here, if C out is a linear NK code and C in is a linear NK code, lowercase, then uh, C out, C, the concatenation, C is a linear NNKK code. Uh, so we can quickly say some things about that concatenated code uh, even without knowing too much about it. All right, so uh, make sure you answer the pre-lecture questions about concatenated codes, and that's it for this pre-lecture.